Well, we, we really want to showcase the fact that our veterans programs have been expanding significantly at the Institute. So we have uh, a lot more patients coming through the clinic who are suffering from issues of specific interest to veterans. And we also have really been growing our traumatic brain injury, Gulf War illness and post-traumatic stress disorder programs. We have a plan, a strategic plan, to grow the clinic with a specific focus on veterans' issues that will go hand in hand with our clinical uh, and laboratory research programmes. And we wanted to showcase that and let everybody know that that's what's coming. Well, we, we really began our work on traumatic brain injury because of the known link between TBI, traumatic brain injury, and Alzheimer's disease. We know that sustaining a traumatic brain injury increases one's risk for Alzheimer's disease. And then out of that, we started to have more of a military focus and looking at other conditions suffered by the military, suffered by veterans, that had an impact on neuropsychological and uh, neurodegenerative health. And so we really uh, began focusing on Gulf War illness and post-traumatic stress disorder in the last five to ten years as well. These are all conditions suffered by our military, um, many of them with, with no treatments, not very good diagnostics even at the moment, and so we're really trying to address that. That's right, there, there are treatments for some of these conditions at the moment, but there's really nothing that has been widely demonstrated to be effective. And I think it's, it's clear, you know, this must be a very bleak picture for patients and for their families. It must look like there's nothing happening. But what I want to do with the Open House today is show people there's work coming. It's down the road, it's not in the clinic yet, but it's coming. So I want them to know that there is hope. I want them to take away the fact that there's a large group of people here who have dedicated their lives to addressing these conditions and we're working day and night to find treatments and better diagnostics and that we're here in their back door in their community trying to help them. Yeah, we're just trying to give awareness that we're very interested in this area of research, helping veterans both on kind of the basic science level, hopefully translating that into clinical trials of the future that will help veterans. And traumatic brain injury, Gulf War illness being several of the main diseases that we're interested in. Yeah, we haven't really actually entered into a clinical trial with the veterans, but you definitely from talking with them hear the, the difficulty that they're in with something like Gulf War illness and how they struggle and how there needs to be, rather than a symptomatic treatment, something actually going after the disease itself, the root of the disease. I think that there's more hope that this is closer than we would have been years ago, that we continue to progress as far as taking something actually to the patient. That's ultimately the goal, is to get what they're working on in the lab and taking it to the patient, that's much closer now. Well, it fits in with our overall spectrum of just trying to improve people's cognitive health in multiple disease states. So it just fits in with other diseases, multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. These are all diseases that limit people's ability to enjoy life and have a healthy life. And so we really want to impact that. Excited by their enthusiasm, I mean that's kind of as a clinician, that's why I work at a place like this, because it's frustrating to take care of patients when you don't have good, good research showing some of the future things that can come along, and here we're involved in that research, so it makes it much more satisfying. So my name is uh, Dr. Joseph Ojo, and I'm originally from West Africa, but I, stu I studied in the United Kingdom. Uh, my specific area of interest are in post-traumatic stress disorder. Well, post-traumatic stress disorder is a mental illness that affects those who have been exposed to a severe um, life-threatening or debilitating um, ex um, stressful exposure, such as witnessing the death of a loved one, uh, being part of a sexual violence or rape, or undergoing um, severe life-threatening injury. Well, it's a uh, 
debilitating condition. There are different clusters of, of symptoms, such as intrusion symptoms. The intrusion symptoms are specifically involve the individual constantly relieving the experience in which they were exposed to. And there are also avoidance symptoms as well, where the actual individual avoids being in open spaces. There is a, when they are reminded of those traumatic events, it causes severe emotional and uh, mood altering s states. Well, first of all, it, it will be helpful to them because we can actually show them what the research we do here and we can offer them help in terms of the research we're doing here. So, for example, we'll be collecting, we're hoping to collect some blood samples from them to be able to study for future studies to look at uh, effects of susceptibility among some veterans as well as resiliency among other veterans. Uh, I hope the take home message is that we are trying our best in our research to be able to find our solutions, the answers, to be able to help them with their, with their problems. So with our research, we're hoping, for example, to be able to identify biomarkers, prognostic and uh, diagnostic biomarkers that would differentiate between resiliency and susceptibility among some, some individuals. So we can target them very early on before negative symptoms emerge. And also we're hoping to be able to develop tr uh, treatment uh, talk, um, specifically identify treatment targets that we might be able to test in our animal models to be able to use and translate in the clinical population. Sure. Uh, Gulf War illness is a multi-something chronic illness. Um, there is a lot of different agents that have been thought to contribute to Gulf War illness. Two major causative agents have been uh, pyridosamine bromide, which were given in form of pills as a prophylactic against um, Gulf, basically uh, um, Gulf War agent exposure or nerve gas agent exposure. And um, the other is actually pesticide exposure, so overexposure to pesticides. And soldiers uh, coated their uniforms with it to protect themselves from the environment. Um, and these are the two major agents that have been attributed to causing Gulf War illness. And what we do here is study Gulf War illness. I use an animal model to study this. So basically, we use an animal model to replicate these type of symptoms in animals so then we can uh, look into basically um, their brains as well because we can look at their periphery, their blood, study those, look for biomarkers so then can be translated for soldiers so we can look at definitive um, targets then for treatment. So as my colleague is working on animal models, I'm the one who's working on the human side. Um, one major problem really with go for illness is that diagnostic is really, really difficult. It's right now um, diagnosed by symptoms. So what we are trying to hope is, especially by looking into something easy like the blood, um, to identify a panel of biomarkers in order so that when a veteran is coming into the hospital, all he has to do is give a drop of blood and, you know, can have a very precise test, um, which will allow him to get the best treatment and also some form of personal treatment. And besides that, the blood, what's happening in the blood tells us a lot of but what's happening in the brain, so we can actually define therapeutic targets. So some of the clinical symptoms that are out there is basically cognitive impairment. So the uh, soldiers develop uh, long-term memory problems. They have a problem remembering. Um, also, they're immune and inflammatory. There's immune and inflammatory symptoms. So there's a dysregulation with their immune system that happens. And um, also, there's uh, gastrointestinal disturbances. Uh, some of the comorbidities that are associated with Gulf War illness are things like depression or also IBD, so irritable bowel syndrome, for example. Um, so what we do here is focus mostly on the brain, studying the brain itself, and we want to see if we can alleviate um, those cognitive symptoms, so uh, help uh, basically improve their uh, memory. Um, I think one of the main things we really want to show them is that it's not our effort just to treat symptoms. We really want to go to the root of the problems because we think if we can treat the cause, we can um, treat a lot of symptoms at once. And that's especially like without in, in, with what we have in go for illness. All these veterans, um, you know, they get diagnosed with both go for illness and then they say, okay, I have pain. So a doctor has to say, okay, other illnesses where people have muscle pain, they t get this specific drug, so I'm going to give you the same drug. It's a logical thing to do, but actually it's not that helpful 
because of the unique ca unique case of go for illness. So we really want to take it a step further. Nearly, uh, actually, nearly a quarter of a million U.S. soldiers that were deployed to the Persian Gulf War have been diagnosed with Gulf War illness. So it's quite a large number. Also, there's uh, reports that obviously. Um, soldiers from other countries, so those uh, from Denmark, Australia, the UK, for example, are also suffering with Gulf War illness. Um, what has been shown is that the proximity of the deployment, basically, to the area, to Kamasia, for, um, has been shown with the severity of Gulf War illness. So if you were closer to the exposure zones, then you have more um, of a debilitating Gulf War illness. I think we're in a very unique uh, place here because we can directly go from our animal models into uh, translational work to translate our findings and help actually veterans who are currently suffering. And we're in such a unique place because when we reach out, we can go to the VA, we can have personal contact with those veterans and see exactly where our research is leading, why are we exactly we're doing this. And there's always a goal here. There's, you know, obviously we're looking for a treatment. We want to help the veterans that we've met. And um, we want to tell them that basically treatment is coming and we're doing our best to find it for them. Final comment. Yeah, really having the clinic right around the corner, it speeds up the process a lot. The veterans come in, you know, do their testing, maybe give their blood, and it directly goes here to us researchers. And I think as a researcher, in, usually in general, you're very focused on your work. You're behind a bench. So sometimes you kind of lose the contact to the actual reality and to those people. And here we really don't have that because we are able to meet them and talk to them and understand their problem, which is a huge motivation for us to work and we are th very the thankful for that. So I got my PhD here at the Institute as part of our PhD program that we, uh, we have here through the Open University and my thesis was focused on uh, traumatic brain injury and trying to find potential therapeutics and now I'm following up on that research and exploring potential therapeutics that have shown some efficacy in models of uh, mild TBI. So a TBI, a traumatic brain injury uh, there, there are two major components to it. The first, of course, is a mechanical or shock wave to the brain, uh, and the second are secondary effects that result from that that last for days, weeks, and months, and even years after the initial injury. So you have a, a, a hit to the head, and then you have a series of events that lead to neurodegeneration uh, that last long after the uh, initial injury. Sure. So uh, you know we have you know, a very good working relationship with the VA and with the veteran community. And it's, it's important to us and for the veterans uh, to know what we're doing here because very soon we might be bringing in new clinical trials as well as doing biomarker research. So if they can assist us, we can help them. Uh, you know, we're looking at potential biomarkers for brain injury because sometimes, you know, they're in the battlefield and they may not even know that they had a, a head injury. It could be a shock wave that didn't even cause loss of consciousness, but it can result in mild TBI and it can result in deleterious effects uh, that they experience over years and may not even know why. So, you know, by getting them involved, we can perhaps enroll them in clinical trials and assist them in recovering from injuries they may not even realize they had. Oh yes, uh, you know, one of the things we're seeing in some of our experimental models of, of TBI is that uh, a single hit to the head, a single mild hit to the head may or may not have prolonged effects. You may recover from it very well. But if you've had multiple exposures, especially, you know, in a battlefield situation with a prolonged deployment, uh, you could end up with much more severe effects that compound upon each other. And you see deterioration in the brain, in, in deeper layers of the brain, uh, that are, affect memory and mood uh, and other factors that last for years afterwards and you see uh, a widening from from initially you know in the, in the acute phases after injury there's only a little bit of difference between a person who's perhaps not been exposed and who has been exposed but you come back years later and you can find much greater differences as these neurodegenerative process processes have uh, taken hold absolutely you know and uh, one of the critical factors there is the time between hits. So if you don't give your brain enough time to heal and, and time to recuperate after initial insult, you end up with much more severe effects. You, have, you may have, uh, for instance, axonal swelling. You might have um, damage in the axons that connect nerves uh, that leads to 
basically uh, severages in the highways of the axon, and that leads to the bulbs and swellings within the axon. If you get another hit before that is recovered, you can have uh, external severage, and then you lose the, the nerve connection altogether. And so uh, with sports injuries, uh, you know, you, you might have an initial impact one week and then you come back and play in another game a week later, you get another impact, now you're much worse off than if you'd taken two impacts that were months apart instead. Well, you know, one of the takeaways I, I want, I, I hope from my own research uh, that, they, that they come home with is the idea that there is hope for treatment even long after the impact, even long after injuries. So, you know, even though they might have come home now and it might have been years since their deployment, there may still be hopefully ways of uh, providing cognitive therapy as well as perhaps even uh, pharmacological uh, treatments to improve their outcome uh, and that's what we're starting to see in some of our experimental models and so hopefully we can translate that into the clinic in the near future uh, for treating veterans. The Roscamp Institute has been an incredible resource for our community looking at diseases that affect all, potentially affect all of us. Um, groundbreaking research that they're, they're doing. The science is amazing. The uh, ability that they have to look into the brain and see how it's being affected by stress, by traumatic brain injury, and um, now their partnership with the VA is very exciting in what they're looking at, trying to help some of our veterans who, you know, are dealing with these symptoms and, and don't know what to do about it. They're going to have research that is going to hopefully help them and find ways that they can uh, you know, attack their illness. Yeah, they should be aware of it. I know it's, you know, that sometimes the science isn't real sexy, but the fact of the matter is that we have a lot of veterans in our area. You know, so many people come here after living somewhere else, and, you know, now some of these diseases are coming to show symptoms, and that there is help, that there are resources here. There's people that care about them, and, um, you know, between Sarasota and Manatee counties, we probably have one of the highest veteran populations in the state, and so it's very important that people understand that there is work being done. There's going to be solutions coming in the future. It's, as I said before, it's a wonderful resource. So many people are coming here studying. I just talked to a couple of research assistants that have come. Um, one of them actually went to high school here in Manatee County and now is working on graduate level work. And they're able to come here and uh, the fact that this started here in Manatee County, actually I think it started in Sarasota and moved to Manatee County, the fact that we have folks that are coming from all over the world doing research here. We all know Manatee County is a wonderful place to live and we're so glad that these folks have found that it's a wonderful place to study and come up with some groundbreaking research. So, very pleased to have them here. The veterans make up such a significant part of our world and, and of the United States and so they've contributed so much it's the we're, we can give back and the, with the tools that we have and the minds that we have here we're making significant uh, inroads into a very very complex set of diseases that are a result of the war illnesses and, uh, and trauma that exist within. Well, we started 24 years ago at USF, moved here about 15 years ago, and we have created, I guess I should say, the, the staff has created a very unique, productive environment. We have not only the chemists, but the researchers, the graduate students, and we probably have $40 million worth of tools uh, today that we can do research on the brain and it's it's just what Diane and I and our family has decided to dedicate our lives to doing. I want them to know that there's hope. You know, just hope. We, we don't, can't guarantee results but every little bit of learning that we do here we publish and we share and if it gives them hope and gives them a, a a way forward out of uh, some illnesses that weren't around 30 years ago. Uh, we, we, it gives us joy to do that. Well, first let, let me say that, that it is an honor here to be uh, president for the congressman. 
about th about three weeks ago, the Congress just came here and toured the Roskamp Institute and um, really was uh, filled in on uh, what was happening here at the Ross Camp with Alzheimer's and the treatment with the veterans. It was at that time that there, there was an inclination that, that something big was going to happen and then two weeks later they would come through with a breakthrough on um, the cell with Alzheimer's research. Um, it became very apparent that you know the congressmen should be involved with, because they're involved with the community here. Um, involving the veterans in this situation and in their research with all the PSTD there, the Gulf War injuries, it's just, it's just something that really, really has to be uh, researched. And Roskamp has the ability to do it. So that's why we're here and that's why they're here. So. Well, it means that, in fact, they are doing the right thing. To see this many veterans here have the interest in what Ross Camp is doing for them. And really, our, our area, with all the veterans that we have here, I think in, in just in uh, Manatee, Sarasota County, there's like 90,000 veterans um, that, that need and need to get their support. And it's great that we're doing it. We can project light at the surface of those sensors. There is a great need for additional research to find effective therapeutics for the maladies that our veterans are suffering from. These guys and girls put their lives on the line for us. The least we can do is ensure that when they finish their military service that we can support and help them and give them the credit that they deserve. As you know, the Ross Camp Institute is a standalone public charity. The mission of the Institute is to find effective cures and treatments for the diseases of the mind. Many of these maladies that our veterans are suffering from are neurologically related. Alzheimer's disease, there's a strong link between Alzheimer's and traumatic brain injury. With Gulf War illnesses, there's a huge array of neurological changes. Post-traumatic stress disorder, we're just scratching the surface on, of that and it affects millions of people. And remember, we're not just talking about this generation of vets. All those guys that come back from Vietnam they were virtually ignored. It's about time, as a society, we stood up and say, OK, we have to account for this. I think the important thing for the families and the veterans themselves is to realise that there are people out there that are working incredibly hard to find treatments so they can live normal lives and we owe it to the vets. Obviously, you can tell I'm not an American, but this is something that affects everyone who comes from a NATO country. It's something that the veterans deserve. And we hope that our work can lead to an improvement in the veterans' lives.